My experience with the Vivo was rather short-lived. Despite being my first aluminum keyboard, I simply couldn't endure it. I distinctly remember dedicating a crazy amount of time and effort into custom making a silicone mold, all in pursuit of a better sound, but ends up with disappointment. Not to mention, those sharp edges and corners makes it hard to enjoy as well. Today, we are taking a closer look at the Tovo 65 V 2.0 from KB Defense. The Tovo 65 is an excellent entry-level custom keyboard option that features a sleek aluminum casing and a convenient 65% layout. For those who prefer a more compact design, KB Defense also offers the Tovo 60 with a 60% layout. Right now, there are no plans to develop for other layouts such as the 75% or the DKL which I'm really looking forward to. The box itself is beautifully designed. Upon opening it, you'll find a small zip bag containing silicone socks, screws, silicone bowls in three different pressure options, poron pads, and a wrench. Finally, we have the silicone fit and the casing itself. In the accessories box, we have the standard foam sets alongside with a braided cable. You'll also find a small zip bag that packs the stock screwing stabilizers. In the three separate envelopes, packs with 1.2mm hot swap PCB, the alu and carbon fiber plate. Thank you KBD fans for the carbon fiber plate this time. In case this is your first time encountering this board, the board draws heavy inspiration from a popular Chinese dish called tofu, which is known for its square shape. From the website, the V2 offers a plethora of colorways with cool ones such as cute and lavender. You also have the option between anodized and eco without any additional cost at all. As for the plates, you have the option to choose between carbon fiber, PC, ALU, or FR4. All these defaults at $188. Prior to the Tobu 65 V1, additional flex cuts has been added across the center of the PCB same goes to the plate where you see extra cuts. As for the casing, they have increased the bezels at the top and bottom, rounded edges being applied, resulting in a sleeker look. The USB cutout has been shifted to center, meaning that you cannot use any of your previous 65% on this one. Lastly, the silicone fit was also changed to stripped, which makes it more stabilized from my experience. One small detail is that there is no adhesive on the strip, which means you can pop off and on as many times you want without needing to worry about losing the adhesive. Despite having a tray mount option resulting in a stiff typing experience last time, I'm very thankful the additional mounting options that are being offered this time. We have top mount, silicon socks mount, and silicon bowl mount, which I'm very excited to explore. Regarding the silicon bowl that was mentioned, there are three different pressure options to choose from, resulting in three different stiffness when typing. Well, if you have been enjoying the video so far, I really appreciate if you can support me by clicking the subscribe button below. I promise as we reach a thousand subs, I'll be hosting my first giveaway, so stay tuned for more details. Now off to the typing test.
Throughout the build, it surprisingly went quickly and smoothly. However, I wouldn't recommend using a carbon fiber plate, especially for the first timers. The switch cutter was too tight, the process of installing and removing can be very very uncomfortable and might damage the switches, and even worse, the PCB. Despite having no foams at all, the sound signature still had a slight hint of muting. If you have the extra budget, I highly recommend you to start working on the better stabilizers first. Regarding the typing experience, the silicone bowl and silicone socks emphasizes on a softer touch. The 60 gram pressure option is still very very soft in my opinion, so I recommend starting from 70 and gradually decreasing the pressure if desired. Nonetheless, they are all remarkably comfortable to type on. Honestly, as much as I love this board, there's really nothing bad to pick from it. I can see the significant improvements have been made, considering every aspect to enhance the overall aesthetics. And yes, at this price range, you may come across keyboard that is similarly better, like the JRE75 and TUG65, which offer more customization suit to your preferences. TOEFL 65 stands out due to its various mounting options, which is very very inviting to new users coming to the keyboard scene. Just my opinion. And that's pretty much it from me. I really hope you'll gain a thing or two from this review. See you on the next one.